Hello everyone, it's Dustin Raglan here, Ableton Certified Trainer, Peer Mind Mentor, Musician, Producer, and Educator here in Oklahoma City. And I wanted to run through some of my favorite things that are coming out with Live 10, which was announced yesterday. A lot of fun, all right? A lot of cool new features, a lot of things that are gonna help you to create new kinds of music and to inspire you in the music that you've already been making. Now, a couple of quick things ahead of time. I'm working with a beta version of Live. Live 10 is not out yet. So if some features change between now and then, just FYI, that's what's going on. And remember, you can always get a full list of the new features, all of the new ways that you can create music with live from Ableton.com. There are great videos, great and complete rundowns of all of the new things that are going to be coming out with Live 10. Really exciting time, and I'm really excited to show you all all of my favorite things that I'm finding inside of Live 10 and the new improvements with Push 2 as well. All right, let's get to it. Now suppose... I play this musical idea down like this bass line. When I hold down the session record button and the new button on push, it's the same as pressing my capture button up at the top of Live's transport. Capture is a new feature where without the record button on, Live is listening to any live MIDI input channels. And I can play this back and capture those as new MIDI clips so I can play my ideas down without having the pressure of the record button on I can pick it up just like I'm picking up a set of sticks and trying an idea on the drum kit or I'm picking up a guitar and strumming. Before I ever press the record button, I can still capture those little moments of inspiration and stay in the flow without starting and stopping record. Now, I've got this MIDI kit playing in my arrangement view and I want to overdub this little polyrhythmic idea on top of it here. So I layer in my second bit of musical idea here. And I'm used to being able to pull up one of these clips in Live's clip view and editing the MIDI one at a time on it. But now, in Live 10, if I hold down Shift and select both of my clips, I can edit multiple MIDI clips at the same time in my clip view. So I can use this for polyrhythmic effects and uh, uh, being able to see what's happening between different rhythms. I can layer in bass and drum grooves together to where they sit in a pocket just right or have just the right amount of swing. Play with quantizing and see how it works on the grid with both clips available for me in my MIDI clip view. Really great for working ideas together. A really, really cool new feature here. Now, in addition to being able to do that with multiple clips in live itself, Push's display will now show me the MIDI clip notes as I'm recording them and then when I'm playing them back. So I'm able to see my MIDI clips on Push's wonderful little display. I can zoom into it. So I can see edits and adjustments right from Push's display. Really, really great for staying in the flow again and when you're composing and throwing together new ideas. Now there are also some amazing new shortcuts and features that we have in our arrangement view for working with audio clips. First is hitting Z to be able to toggle my zoom in and out and shift Z to zoom back out. I also have fade handles right in the arrangement view without me having to activate any fade lanes and automation. I can use my fade ins, fade outs, and cross fades this way. Now I also have the ability to hold down shift and drag on the edge of a clip to create time stretching right in the arrangement view without having to go in my clip view and use warp markers. It's built right into the arrangement here. Remember, I can zoom in and out with Z and shift Z. And I also want to collapse all of my tracks to be able to see everything in my arrangement, very dense arrangement. I can use the new S shortcut for show all tracks. Now I also have the ability now in the arrangement view to just by selection deactivate portions of clips just by working with a single selection instead of deactivating the entire clip or having to separate the clips out beforehand for doing this. I can also reverse sections of clips just by selecting a portion in my arrangement view and without having to separate the clip out, just hitting the R command will reverse that portion of audio. Also new in our arrangement view is our automation lanes are now hidden and shown with the key command A. So A will pull up the familiar automation lanes that we're used to seeing here, but it allows us to keep our interface a little bit cleaner and to draw in our automation lanes and then be able to clean that back up out of the arrangement view. Now those of you all used to doing this in Logic, you're gonna recognize it as a great familiar keyboard command, just like myself. So I can draw in an automation line just like this, 
controlling how much the echo dry wet is affecting this drum loop. I'm going to smooth out the line. You'll notice that moving breakpoints now in the arrangement view is uh, more natural and you're able to slide them both horizontally and vertically without having to hold down any modifiers like shift. So you'll find that this is going to improve your workflow, but this is a grammar thing. It may seem like a very small change at first, but it's one thing that's going to change the way that you work the more and more, and more that you get used to it. Now another great detail is when rendering down a project now, you can export straight to MP3. This has been a huge feature request for a lot of folks, I include myself. You can now send it straight down to an MP3 as well as our common high resolution file options, of course in our video options as well. You also have some new themes available to you. So light, dark, mid-dark, these really great new consistent themes and even a good old Live 9 theme for those of you missing Live 9's colors. Now another great thing, is that we're able to now name our inputs and outputs with custom names. So I'm giving mine the really uh, uh, creative names of one and two here for my inputs. And those of us using interfaces or converters have a lot of ins and outs. So we may be also using outboard gear that's routed to specific places or specific points on a patch bay. This is going to be really, really helpful in organizing any of your routing going in and out of live to analog gear, as well as just the recording process in general. Now Ableton hasn't forgotten about improving the browser as well, and one of my favorite things is the new collections feature. So when I browse through some instrument presets I like, I can hit a number key, let's say number five, and I can add these sounds to a custom collections folder. So it allows me to quickly navigate to lead sounds that I might like from my lead magic folder. It's going to be instrument presets, it can be clips, all kinds of uh, sounds can be included in your collections, and you can build these as you begin to get more and more uh, large collections of samples and loops and ideas and instruments laid out ready for you. It's a great way to be able to speed up your access to those and your favorites. Now this is something I've been looking forward to for a long time. Our real-time frequency analyzer on Push's display. This is great for being able to mix with only Push as your mixing controller, your mixing interface. Working with the EQ8 display on Push is um, it's an amazing new little thing and something uh, that I've been excited about for a while. One of the most exciting things for me, just as a mix nerd myself. Another great thing is that we can make sidechain assignments with compressors and uh, gates inside of Push itself. So without having to go back to live, we can make the sidechain assignments like I have for the drums being sidechained to this synth sound right here. All that happens on Push's display. Of course, you get some updated improvements to the push display too as well, seeing what's happening with the compressor here. Now, we're used to seeing our full 64-pad note layout on push. We're also used to seeing our step sequencer. But now we have a new 32-step mode where I can select a note on the bottom from my melodic grid, and then I can sequence that a lot like a drum rack right above that note. And this to me is a little bit more intuitive and a little bit more easy to flow with than the step sequencer that we had previously with Push, or we still do have. But this one just has been more useful to me in doing some step sequences. I just select the note on the bottom and fill in my pattern up above. Sometimes those notes aren't exactly right. Eh? Keep everything on push right in front of me, stay in musical flow as I go. Now, I want to introduce you to Wavetable. Wavetable is a new software instrument with Live 10. A Wavetable synthesizer is extremely accessible and easy to use, but also goes very, very deep into sound design beautiful soundscapes, whether that's working with pads, or bass sounds, or lead sounds, or even drums. The interface is really, really nice to look at. And you can expand the wavetable interface to be able to show you every movement among the many, many included wave sounds. Wavetable also features a wonderful matrix for routing different movements to those wave sounds. And since you have these complex and evolving wave shapes available to you in the wavetables, you can use the matrix router to quickly 
and creatively affect these sounds both in real time and to set up for sound design. This has been the thing I've spent the most time with, with Live 10, and I've really, really enjoyed it, and it's inspired a whole lot of new music, and I'm sure it's going to for you all as well. Use the flexible LFOs for some really, really interesting movement into the sound. Now I mentioned that Wavetable is also great for sounds that are not pads. Very crunchy, grungy, fuzzy, hairy basses can come out of this, and it's really, really wonderful sounding. There's a nice sub-oscillator included with Wavetable that you can activate or deactivate to thicken up those low-end sounds. Of course, experiment with different Wavetables. Sweep through those Wavetables to get a small bit of evolution even in your bass sounds. Now another amazing new audio effect in live is the Echo plugin. The Echo features this wonderful sound tunnel right in the middle that shows you what your sound is doing through time and overdrive the input. Of course, Echo shows up beautifully on Push's display as well. You can interact with it without even having to look at the computer screen. All of the best features of analog and digital delays are included with Echo. It's everything you've been looking for with a delay. And next to Wavetable, and even paired with Wavetable, or Operator as in this case, amazingly expressive and can create some newness to sounds you might be already used to. There's a way I think of Echo. I describe it as a musical audio effect. It's extremely musical. Add in some character with noise and modulation, ducking and gating. Of course, using the wonderful mid-side mode, you can create some new stereo effects that aren't even possible on the best old uh, vintage hardware delays. There's a sound tunnel, helping you to see it all in real time. Great modulation envelopes. Of course, we have ping pong and stereo mode as well available to us, and you can dial in some extra reverb to the sound. Now, another new audio effect here is pedal. Pedal is small but extremely mighty for adding very smooth overdrive, crunchy distortion, or thick and growly fuzz to any sound, including a sound like this pad right here from Operator. Use the EQ to dial in the shape that you want for the sound. Even have it interact with the input gain for Echo to dial in just the right amount of distortion and noise. And of course, Push keeps this all in a beautiful interface as well. 
nice little parallel control with the dry wet knob. The pedal is small, but very, very, very mighty. And finally, in the new audio effects, we have drum bus. I'm being a drummer myself, this is close to my heart, but it's also extremely useful for working with a group track of drums or individual drum tracks or loops to add in some extra overdrive, extra crunch, to dampen high frequencies, which could often be a problem for digitally sourced loops and uh, sources that you didn't have any control in recording. You can add in some extra transients or take those away to tighten up the sound. Dial in some extra low sub frequency with boom and focus those frequencies in the right place for your kick drum and even bring in some great bus compression here. It's great for making an otherwise dry or lifeless loop come to life and it's great on things like vocals and bass and pads as well. Now finally, a long looked for feature and we'll end with this today. I'm gonna group a couple of tracks together here. But now, in Live 10, I can nest groups inside of one another. So I have groups one and two here on this track, and I'm gonna put groups one and two into their own nested group. All right, so this goes down into as many levels as you need it to for organizing your session. This is great for those of us who work with takes and want to playlist different takes of multi-mic drums or multiple instruments, or stereo takes. All of that can be used to organize your session and to flow and to create more music.